Brian in Clinton Township, Michigan. Townships, that's interesting. I guess it's like a little city. Why would it be a township? You know, back east, things are so different than they are out here with us hacks out in the west. <laughs> Brian writes to me and he says, I I'm working on some do-it-yourself amps and wondering if you could explain to me what the input capacitor does. I know they can greatly affect the sound quality, depending uh, which ones you use, but why is this part so critical? Also, the size of the input cap I know really matters with too low having a bass roll off, but too high also not good. What value is uh, is I, uh, idea generally and why? Thank you. Okay. So, well, not everybody uses input capacitors. We don't use input capacitors, generally speaking. And I'll explain that. So, yeah, and yes, uh, input capacitors have a major impact on sound quality. So you want to use a good quality cap on that. Basically, it blocks DC. So when we have an amplifier, we are trying to amplify AC, right? So music is AC. Now that can get a little confusing because generally we consider AC to be what comes out of the wall, right? This is. Over, this is AC, that's 110 volts AC at 60 cycles a second. Well, AC means alternating current. It doesn't mean this. This happens to be alternating current, but it doesn't mean that. What it means is, unlike DC, which is just a steady voltage that never moves, AC is a moving voltage. It's going between plus and minus, plus and minus, or zero and plus but just think of it as plus and minus, up and down. And music, that's what it does. Bloom, 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 up and down, up and down. It is AC. When we amplify AC, we take a little wiggle signal and we run it through our amplifier and we get a big one out, right? So AC in, AC out. What we don't want to do in an amplifier is amplify DC because guess what happens? If you have an amplifier without a coupling cap and you put a little bit of DC in, what do you get? A lot of DC out. Little AC in, a lot of AC out. Little DC in, a lot of DC out. And we don't want that DC out because what we want our amplifier, here, here's our whole signal, we want our amplifier to idle at zero. So when it sits here, it's at zero, and then as the AC starts coming in, it starts going up and down, but we don't want it to wind up down here or up here, which is what would happen if you had DC. Because imagine if this is all you got for the signal to move between, and you're already sitting this far away from the top, when you start putting that AC in, it's gonna <laughs> bump up against the top and clip. It'd be fine going down, but it's you've skewed the whole wiggle AC up or down depending on the polarity of the DC voltage that comes in. So we don't want DC coming in. Therefore, we put a DC blocking cap on the input. Um, now, do you have to do that? Well, no, if you can guarantee that you're not gonna have any DC from whatever you're connecting to, like for example, if you put a blocking cap on the output of the preceding a piece of equipment and you know there's no DC there, then you don't need a blocking cap. So in your system, you just want to make sure that that's what's happening. Now we do stuff because we make consumer audio products. I don't know what you're going to put into my product. I have no clue. But as a manufacturer, I got to make sure that if you do put in something that you shouldn't, it's not going to have an effect, right? So while we don't like blocking caps unless it's a uh, vacuum tube, and then that, that's a whole other thing. Uh, we use what's called servo circuits, and, and a servo circuit measures the input and, makes, and the output, and it makes sure that if there is any kind of input DC that it makes up for it, but we're not going to get into that right now. We'll talk about it if you want at some point how a servo works, but that's what a blocking capacitor is for. So if you're going to do it, it's the simplest way. Make sure it's a good one. And depending on your input impedance, which is going to determine 
how big or how small that cap is, um, that's where you're going to want to have your, your roll-off. That's what determines the roll-off. And I, when I used to design those kinds of things, I definitely want my roll-off to be well below one hertz. So you know the formula, one over two pi RC. That, look it up. It's, it's, it's how you calculate you know, with a given value of resistance, what the capacitor will be, or vice versa, all that kind of good stuff. All right, probably too technical for a lot of folks. <laughs> Thanks for the question. I'll talk to you later. All right, bye. Thank you.